Our trip to Brazil was prompted by Lee telling me about the house that she and her husband had built years ago on a small island south of Rio. She showed me pictures and it looked very Robinson Crusoe-ish. So we decided to go and spend two weeks chilling out. We started with a few days in Rio, battling the frenetic traffic. We made our way to the Corcovado and took the funicular up to the top to see the statue of Christ the Redeemer. What a view! The statue stands nearly 40 meters high and is a symbol of Brazilian Christianity. Copacabana Beach has been the venue for many celebrities. Rod Stewart, the Rolling Stones, Lenny Kravitz, and even the Pope recently. Of course, we all know it for volleyball. The separate cycling and jogging lane along the road stretches for miles. What a boon for fitness fanatics. The weather was generally great and I can't begin to tell you what an incredible feeling of happiness and laid-backedness this whole place exudes. It's as if they're all on permanent holiday. They really do go for this fitness thing, don't they? ATMs on the beach, great idea. Sugarloaf Mountain is one of several monolithic granite and quartz hills that rise straight from the water's edge around Rio. A two-stage cable car takes you to the top giving beautiful views wherever you look. Sunset from Sugarloaf Mountain. Wow! Ipanema is just south of Copacabana and just as beautiful. In fact, I think I preferred it. They have these lifeguard stations and good clean ablutions every one kilometer along the beach. Ah, what a life. Maybe this should be called body ball. These guys are good. Ah well, I had to show a few of these, didn't I? Hey, they start him young in Rio. We're off to Paqueta for the day, an island in Guanatara Bay, just north of Rio. 
the locals tend to visit it on public holidays and just chill out, swim and relax. There are no motor vehicles on the island, so getting around is limited to bicycles and horse-drawn vehicles. There are literally hundreds of bike hire places, so guess what we did? They say you never forget how to ride a bike. Well... You can do it, Lee. You can do it. Ah, uh, no. Maybe we should have hired one of these? Yes, how about that? It's really peaceful here. Beautiful spots wherever you look. This takes me back a bit. Time for an ice cold beer and they do make them cold in Brazil. I cannot tell you how good they were. At the end of the day, it's back to the ferry and back to Rio. Lee's friends, Robin and Fiona, took us to their home in the mountains north of Rio for the weekend. The drive there was spectacularly scenic. On the way, Fiona couldn't resist buying some really beautiful orchids. We also took the opportunity of filling up with mountain stream water as you can't drink the tap water in Brazil. We stopped for morning tea at this beautiful old guest house from a bygone era. It's surrounded with roses, bromeliads, wild raspberries and aromatic herbs. A truly lovely spot. On now through the mountains to our destination, Teresopolis. The region was originally occupied by runaway slaves coming from the sugar plantations near Rio. Don't know the name of these falls, but quite impressive. Excessive rains caused massive destruction here in 2011. 382 people lost their lives and thousands of houses were destroyed. Home sweet home. What a spot. Breakfast in the mountains. Perfect. That evening we were entertained by none other than Bobby Darren himself. A bride tasted so much better in these surroundings. The next day we drove through the town and I must admit it seemed very third world. Note the dustbin out of reach of the dogs. Sadly they also have their slum or favela as they are called. Back in Rio and we left Robin and Fiona's house in Copacabana and headed for the feira or farmers market passing colorful graffiti and street artisans on the way. On the slopes of the mountain behind us lay one of the infamous favelas or slums. A nicer part of town. <laughs> Made me homesick. The farmer's open air market changes location every day using the streets of the area. It's the best place in Rio to buy fresh fruit and veggies and has a huge selection to choose from. Most housewives shop at these markets for their fresh produce. Cashew nuts. Mandioc, which is the staple diet of Brazil. Coconut. Then we headed downtown by tube. Looks very modern compared to London.
This is the Sahara area of Rio, sort of flea marketish almost. Lunchtime, and Lee took us to a churrasseria, and they had a special on. That's about 200 rand, eat as much as you like. They come with these skewers, all with different sorts of meat on them. Hmm, I obviously didn't have the hang of it, but hey, what a way to eat. Bananas. The Brazilians love their cooked bananas. And the salads go on and on. <sighs> While you display the green side, the meats keep coming. Turn it to red, you're full. And of course there's dessert. We visited the Sao Bento Monastery where the monks still do the Gregorian chant. The interior was a little ornate for me. But the stained glass window was magnificent. Then on to the hippie fair crafts market every Sunday morning in Ipanema, very similar to some of ours here in South Africa. Well, we're on our way from Rio to Lee's Island, Jaguanum, about an hour and a half's drive down the coast. Arriving at Itukurusa, our jumping off point, we made our way down to the harbour. We piled our stuff on the wharf and relaxed, waiting for Louise to arrive with the boat to collect us. A really pretty little spot. And here comes Louise. Let me explain that there are no shops, hotels, businesses, nothing on the island. So you have to take everything with you. This was our till slip for supplies for the first week. We're off, about a 40 minute trip in Alexander's old boat. Alexandra is Lee's friend, who very kindly loaned us her home for our stay on the island. You're not about to witness a fantastic happening, but merely our life lazing around for two weeks. My first glimpse of Jaguanum. The yellow house on the left is the house that Lee built. And this was our playground for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> Up early that first morning and there were fishing boats anchored in the bay. After working all night, the crews were coming ashore to have a shower at a watering point near us. I just love these little boats they go around in. They always seem to be in imminent danger of capsizing. Our early morning chore, fetching the drinking water. Although one can drink the water from the storage tanks, 
the locals prefer to fetch spring water and keep it in the fridge. Doing nothing in paradise was tough going for a while, but we finally got the hang of it. Every day, we used to walk over to Lee's old house. The views from there were very beautiful. And birds graced us with their presence. We spent our days there drinking ice-cold Brazilian beer. Lee then showed me how to make a caipirinha. First of all we have cachaça, which is number 51, which is the type I like, use, use both, which is 39% alcohol. Okay. Then we have sugar, then we have a lime, which is Tahiti, lemon, we have a glass, we have some little bit of water and we have ice, and we have something to squash it with. It shouldn't be put, but you put the skins in. Oh, maybe a little bit more. And then you put a little bit of this, this is some liquid. Cachaça. Cachaça. And then you're going to squash it. Oopsie. Mm -hmm. More cachaça. Sawuji. That's gorgeous, that's very nice. <laughs> Fantastic. And then a little cheroot. All very tiring. Next door there was a little slipway where the locals helped each other maintain their boats. I wonder how many of these simple folk have heart problems. After sitting in the shade, watching the guys working on the boats for a while, we decided to wander along the coastal path a bit, take in the views, and meet some of the local families. <laughs> wave, wave to me. These men were helping build a small home here. Amazing. Look at the high-tech toys this little boy is playing with and enjoying. Some things don't come from the mainland. Cloves? Cinnamon. Coconuts. <laughs> and best of all, avos. But you have to be brave to get them. Add prawns and voila, avocado roots. Talking of prawns and food, the local fishermen kept us well supplied. 
<laughs> Fried prawns. Prawns again. And crab. <laughs> Kosha with prawns and chicken in mandioc batter. Mm. The girls made farofa, a delicious savoury banana dish made with mandioc flour. Potato. Early in the morning, we set off from Jagwanum in Lee's friend's boat to cross to the mainland. We collected our car and set off along the beautifully scenic drive down the coast to the historical old town of Parati. This is a country of rock slides. They're everywhere. Brazil's sole nuclear power plant was built here at Angra. Parity consists of a new town and an old town. The ancient cobbles in the old part are really vicious. This quaint little town is steeped in history and with its distinctive architecture and cute little shops is now a sought after stop for tourists. This man was actually working on a South African two-cent piece, can you believe? Gold was discovered in the mountains behind Parity around 1700, and the ensuing gold rush led to the construction of the Gold Trail between the gold fields and parity. This was used to get the gold to the coast and supplies, miners and slaves back to the gold fields. Parity became the export port for the gold being sent up the coast to Rio. Now the little port is teeming with tourists taking scenic trips around the bay. During spring tides, parts of the town flood and in places they have these little pedestrian bridges. A truly gorgeous little town, proud of the cameo role it played in Brazilian history. On the way home, we took this boat across to Ilha Grande, the largest of the islands off the coast just south of Rio. and spent the day just wandering around the cute little port. It's largely undeveloped. There are no cars, no roads, and was once home to a notorious prison. The gorgeous tropical beaches were a wonderful place to sit and drink beer. Hiking trails abound over its rugged landscape. A lovely laid-back tourist destination. Time to go. We went for a couple of boat trips around Jagunum and some of the nearby islands. I couldn't get enough of the beauty and quaintness of the place. It was really sort of tropical islandy, Robinson Crusoe-ishly special. I believe they sometimes have weddings on this little beach. Wonderful. We visited Monteiro Cavalho's private island. He owns the VW franchise in Brazil. 
used to throw big parties here in his youth. Hence the great bry area near the beach. What a setting! The views from his veranda were stunning. And what would life be without your own private beach? We walked across to the other side of his island to see the guest quarters. If I bought a VW, would I crack an invite? And then onward, past an island inhabited solely by cats, can you believe? We passed the yacht harbour and our guide wanted to fill up. <laughs> a boer marker plan. <laughs> Further around the main island, Itokurusa, we came upon the only hotel in these parts. Beautiful setting. Oh, where art thou, Rob? <laughs> Can you believe I fell out of the boat? Lee's housekeeper Anna suggested we go down the island to her sister's restaurant for a fish lunch. Knowing there weren't any restaurants on the island, this intrigued us enough to go. After a short walk down the beach, we met Mr. D'Souza, the restaurant's owner, effecting running repairs on some of his equipment, and his sons bringing in our lunch. The restaurant was strategically situated with some charmingly authentic decor and stunning views of the beach and local islands. Of course we ordered fish and I went to the kitchen to see how they prepared it. Talk about the restaurant. A bit of an average meal, made fantastic by the great ambiance. One weekend, Lee had a bribe for Louise's family who were visiting. Lovely people, but I couldn't speak Portuguese, so communication was a problem. <laughs> Tourist boats used to visit our bay over weekends, which shattered the serenity for a couple of hours. But they were soon gone and were the only forms of life we saw, apart from a few islanders now and again. Otherwise, no people, no newspapers, no phones, no nothing. Admittedly, there were days when we did have to put some effort in. Swimming, for instance. As the day grew to a close and peace and tranquility reigned, the oldies shattered that tranquility by pretending they were young again. The day we left, Louis stacked our bags precariously in the little rowing boat and took them out to the big boat. <laughs> Every time I see this clip, I think of how Peter's bags would have left the Queen Mary.
Goodbye, Jaguanuma. You were awesome.